put this on record now. Fantastic. So uh, this session is typically the second fundamental session that you'll join, but you may have joined it sooner. That is totally fine. Uh, what we're going to get into today is really how to conduct interviews. So this is a crucial session for anyone that's wanting to really execute Parkbench. Obviously, there are some people that can just roll up and knock out an interview and they're fantastic. Uh, there are also other people more like myself who like to do a little bit of research and planning before they get started, um, you know, really doing these interviews. So that's what we're going to go through today. There's a few different elements of that. We're going to be talking about the five steps that make up an interview. We're going to be talking about the most effective way to film interviews. We're going to look at the differences between Zoom and in person. And then we're also going to really look at what makes a fantastic interview. Now, how we'll end is we'll chat a little bit about probably the most important interview that you'll do, and that is of yourself, uh, because all these different pieces really make up uh, the initial process here with Park Bench and even what you're going to be doing later down the track. So, Let's get started. Now, what we're gonna begin with, and just very quickly, are talking about these five steps to a prospect interview. So whenever you have booked an interview and you're going to go and do it in person or you're doing it remotely, there are five things that you're wanting to do. So we're gonna to touch on all these just very quickly, but we're gonna focus on the first two today. So the first one is the greeting. Now, during the greeting, you want to pre-frame expectations. You want to make sure that this person is really uh, up to speed with what you're going to be doing that day. This is a normal conversation. You just say, hey, super excited to do this interview today. Uh, so we're going to be doing it over Zoom. And here are some things that I want you to know. We're going to do it in person. i uh, sorry, in person. So as we're doing it face to face, I just need to set up my equipment. There are a few things I want to touch base with you on. Now, during your greeting, you want to really pre-frame expectations around what's going to happen. Remind them about how much time you're expecting this uh, to take and check to see if that works for them. Hey, I know we blocked out 35 minutes for this. Does that still work for your calendar? Because if they don't have that time, you want to know now before you get started with your interview. There's nothing worse than that person looking very impatient whilst you're trying to conduct an interview because that's going to throw you off. So first thing, pre-frame expectations on time. Next, pre-frame expectations in regards to the process. Remind them about the questions you're asking. And this is a way for you to set up your equipment and get ready to go. Okay, so explain the process, how many questions you're going to be going through, how long it's going to take, and that you're going to be talking to them after the interview, which you'll do next. So that's really the greeting. It's just a conversation before you get started. And you do this on Zoom, you do this in person, you do this over the phone, whatever medium, it's talking before you actually conduct the interview. Now, step two is, or phase two, is the interview itself. So if you're blocking out 30 minutes to do this, you wanna get onto your interview right away because that is the most important piece of content that you're gonna be covering or creating during this moment with them. So make sure that you're ready to go for doing that interview. Now, we're going to talk about that in a lot more detail, but there are three other steps that I'm just going to allude to now because we'll talk about that in other sessions. And that is after the interview, you want to have a chat with them, and this is a great opportunity to bring up real estate. Following that, you're going to talk about next steps relating to when you're going to post that interview, confirming their contact information is correct, and really promoting that uh, on social media and, and really setting up that business profile page and how you'll end this process is by asking for interview referrals. So a question like, do you know of anyone that's gonna benefit from being interviewed like you have? They're gonna give you some ideas of who to interview next or potentially even connect you with these interviewees, which saves you from having to book them. So you've got these five steps. Now we're gonna go over these first two in this session. We've kind of summarized the greeting already. Preframe expectations in regards to time and what you'll be doing that day, explaining the process and then setting up then you move right into your interview. So I'm just going to change my screen share and we're going to get into what you need to be doing for your interview. Now, by this time, by the time that you've arrived and you know, doing your interview with this person, you've likely done a little bit of preparation as it relates to setting yourself up uh, with understanding what you're going to say at the beginning, what questions you're going to ask and how you're going to finish your interview. Because those are really the three primary elements. It's, asking uh you know 
asking yourself, how am I going to begin this or create an introduction? What questions am I going to ask during the interview? And then finishing off by asking yourself, what am I going to summarize at the end? How am I going to finish this piece of content? Intro, Q&A, and your uh, what we call an outro at the end. Now, to get started with the first piece of your interview, that's going to be your introduction. Now, I'm going to send you this resource after this session. But to summarize, we've got these three bullet points here. Who are you? That's the first one. Who is this person that you're interviewing? That's the second one. And then the third one is really a pro tip, which is to add in something awesome about the interviewee. So an example, good introduction would be something like this. Hey, my name is Matt and uh, I am here with you today for another episode of Get to Know Liberty Village. Today, I'm meeting with Samantha. She is the owner of Grazi Restaurant in Yagan Eglinton. Thanks for joining us today, Samantha. That's a good introduction. It's clear you cover the important pieces. But a great introduction is based off the research that you will have done prior to this interview to really set yourself up for success in your intro, really make you look like an expert in your field, sharp as a tack, and a figure of authority, which is an amazing first impression. So a great introduction would sound like this. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Matthew KUT, real estate agent with Remax West Realty here in Liberty Village. And today I'm here with Samantha, the owner of Grazi Restaurant in Young and Eglinton. Now, this restaurant, Grazi, is amazing. If you've not been there already, you've got to go check it out. It actually has won Best Award for Eats Out uh, in our neighborhood for the last three years running. So a fantastic place uh, to check out and a fantastic place for me to interview. So thanks so much for joining me today, Samantha. Now, what you're doing here is you're adding more substance to your introduction to build this person up. They're going to feel really good about the process because you're complimenting them, you're highlighting them but you're also being that guide, right? And every story, and that's what you are creating. You're creating a story with this person. There is always a guide and a hero of the story. When you're doing an interview, the hero of the story is always the interviewee. That's what you want it to be. Because if you make yourself the hero, it's not gonna have the same effect on you. The same goes here for this coaching session. Whether you're gonna be watching this on YouTube in the future or watching this live with me now on Zoom, you're the hero of the story. We want to make sure that this is content that's relevant to you. It's not about me, it's about you. So that's what you want to be doing with your interviews. Building them up, having them be the center point of what you're discussing. So an introduction like that. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Matthew KUT, real estate agent with Brokerage. And today I'm here with interviewee who is this position at this business. They're awesome for these different reasons. Thanks for joining me today that's gonna help you set that tone of the type of professional that you are. Now that's the first thing that you're gonna be doing for your interviews. Following this, you're going to need to think about what happens after the introduction. Now this is something that you can influence but cannot control. You can influence that discussion based off the questions that you ask, but you cannot control their answers. Sometimes you will have a question that you think is fantastic, but the answer that you'll get maybe doesn't meet your expectations of it. That happens. Other times, you'll think that the question's okay, you'll ask it, and then you'll get an amazing response. Like something like this. Um, what's something that most people don't know about the business? You might think that they share something about a product. You might think that they share something about a, um, you know, the, the service that they provide but they may go down the route of how they got started in that business. And it could be a really touching or inspirational story. The things that people will unveil in these interviews often relates to overcoming adversity or something that's really fun and enjoyable that other people want to gather around. That's fantastic content to create. So don't look too harshly at your questions. Just focus on, does this question have the ability to, share, to have the interviewee share a fantastic story? Those are usually the ones you want to ask. Now, furthering on from that, the types of questions that you want to ask are what you refer to as open questions. Now, an open question is when you ask someone something and they cannot just answer by saying yes or no or keep it really short. Its counterpart, a closed question, is something that someone will respond to with a very uh, clear 
definitive answer, usually very, very short. More often than not, it's a yes or no. So here's an example of like the differences in what you'd want to be saying. If you ask this person, do you enjoy being a business owner? They could just say yes. And you might be thinking that they're going to share all these great stories or fun things about them being a business owner, but you ask them a question which their brain's going to go, what's the answer to that? Yes or no. And they're going to give you a clear cut, straight answer because it's closed. So ask an open question. What is your favorite thing about being a business owner? They can't say yes or no. They may say something short because you can't control that necessarily, but you can influence that conversation and prompt them to give more information. Now that also ties back into the way that you pre-frame your process. What some agents will do is they want to make sure that they're very much sticking to time, which I agree with. I think that you shouldn't be there for longer than 35 minutes. And so when they are setting up, they'll say to the person, so a little bit about the process today, I'm going to ask you these questions. Now for your answers, you know, aim for something that's 30 to 60 seconds long. Nothing really longer than that is really needed because sometimes people will just talk for the sake of talking and nothing too short because you don't want to have, you know, a 20 second interview. Sound good? And they'll go, yeah, that's so helpful. Thank you so much. Because you're giving them the context of how to behave and maybe a new environment for them. So if they're thinking they're going to be giving you a 30 to 60 second answer, it really doubles down on those open questions that you're, you're asking. Now, the other thing with your questions that you want to be getting into is really understanding what makes up a good interview versus what makes up an exceptional one. A good interview is when you talk about one thing, their business. That's a good interview. You know, you ask them questions like, how do you get started? right? What products or services do you offer? What are your open hours? You know, um, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about your favorite success stories for your clients? Describe your business, that type of thing. That's very much a, a good interview. A great interview is going to expand over four key areas. And I'll put these into the chat box for those that are attending live. But for those that are uh, watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to hear me go through this. But area to cover, areas to cover, uh, and I'm going to put this into the chat box here. Number one is what does this person do? Obviously, that's really important. And that's what that good interview really covered. But what we want to do is expand from that. We don't want to just focus on what this person does, because that can be very cut and dry. We want to focus a little bit more on the person behind the profession. So we need to find out what does this person like? Now, it's not like, hey, tell me what your hobbies and interests are. It's asking questions in a way which will reveal their likes and interests, but maybe also promote their business or even things that they love about the community because people really love hearing about that. So instead of saying, what are your hobbies and interests? You could say to the person, what's your favorite thing about being a business owner, right? That's revealing what they like. Or what are your favorite things about the area? Or do you have any uh, restaurants that you particularly love in this community that you think people should visit more? Hashtag shop local. So you're revealing a lot of information that's relevant to the interview because it's about them and their business, but also the area itself that they're located in. People are getting talked up and they like that. But you're also going to find out information that relates to how you can better serve them. So a question like, what are your favorite things to do in the area? that's going to reveal valuable follow-up information for yourself. This person might say, you know, when I'm not running my business, I love to go surfing. I love to go rock climbing. I love to go hiking. I love to go to restaurants with my partner. Whatever their verbiage is that they say here, these are all things that you can use to follow up with them later. Because if they do love going surfing, maybe you see an article about surfing in your community and you grab that link and you text it to them. And you say, hey, I saw this and I thought of you, send. One of the biggest challenges that I hear from agents is that they don't know what to say uh, when they're following up. They'd love to follow up, but all they can send are their real estate information emails, which they don't get any responses to, and they want to have conversations because conversations are where you find your clients. How do you start more conversations? Talk to them about things that they're interested in. We've all been in that situation before, maybe not so much now, but when you would go to a gathering, 
could be a party, a, a, someone celebrating a special event. And you're chatting to people that maybe know the host like you do, but you don't really know these people. And the questions that people will ask is, what do you do, right? And people will talk about that further if they both know a little bit about it. So find out what these people like, because it's going to give you relevant material to follow up with them, plus even give you ideas of who to interview next. The next part of this, you know, step three or phase three or area three to cover in your interview is what does this person uh, want? Now that's a little different than what they like. What they like is they're talking about their interests. What does this person want? Could be a call to action for the audience, right? That you put on the end of the interview. Uh, it could be something that they want to see from the community or want to have in the community. Maybe they want to see some different changes in their neighborhood. You can ask a question like, what significant changes have you seen in this area while you've been a business owner? And again, it's an open question and they're going to reveal things that may be irrelevant to them. Things that they like, maybe things that they don't like. But what's going to happen from this is that you're going to find out again information that will allow you to better serve them. And it ties very much into the last phase or the last area to cover. And that is, what does this person need? So in your interviews, you're wanting to find out what they do, what they like, what they want, what they need. And that last one is so powerful. Because if you find out about their goals for the future, maybe they see their business uh, hitting a new milestone in, in the next 12 months, it's likely that they're going to need things to get there, whether it's clients, maybe staff, or services or products and professionals to help them get to that point. Now, if there is something that you can help them out with, AKA connecting them with uh, a service provider, uh, you know, people that are interested in working for that company, what's gonna happen? is that you're going to be serving them beyond the interview. And that's really the lifeblood of this platform is connection. So after every interview, you want to either be able to say, hey, you need this. I actually know someone that can help you with that. Let me connect you. And you get into your phone, you connect them right away. Or you make a mental note. Hey, that person said they need a new landscaper uh, for their business's front garden that they want to really highlight. Maybe they need a contractor. Maybe they need a commercial real estate agent because they're looking for a, um, you know, a new area to expand their business into. Whatever it is, a web designer, a personal trainer, a tutor for their kids. If you don't know someone that they need, go and interview that person and then connect them together. Because what's going to happen is you're going to help uh, some of them either make money or improve their quality of life by overcoming a challenge or getting them closer to a goal that they're wanting to hit. So it's all about connection. And that is really what separates a fantastic local leader, a fantastic sponsor of the site from someone that's maybe more so just doing interviews, air quotes. The desire to really be that go-to connector, that digital mayor, that go-to real estate agent or local professional, the connection piece is so valuable. So if that's what you want, you've got to be focusing or what does this person need? So these should be reflected in the questions that you ask. Now we have a set of tools essentially for you uh, to build from. You don't have to be thinking of this off the top of your head. You can go into the back end of your site and click on the interviews tab here on the left hand side. This will allow you to check out the different forms and templates that are available for you to build your interviews from. Each of these templates have their own strengths and weaknesses because they're focused on a different profession or person in your community. Now, it sounds like I shouldn't have to say this, but I, I, I often will have to. Each template is specific to a, sp a personal profession. So if you are interviewing a principal of a school, don't choose mortgage lender interview. Don't choose business owner interview. It's not gonna make sense for that one to be the case. Pick the template that's most applicable to the person you're interviewing. Now, with that being said, one of these templates has a few more bells and whistles than the rest of them. And that is this top one here on the left, the business owner interview, just under the interview form section. Now, this one is going to create not only the interview when you post it, but it's also going to create a business profile page and user account for the interviewee. 
So if they are a principal of the school, they'll get a business profile page for their school. If they are a mortgage lender, they will get a business profile page for their business. If they are a police officer and you've used this one here, it will create a business profile page for their company, we'll say. So some of these templates are a bit more suited towards the individuals, but more often than not, you're gonna find the business owner interview template is suitable for local professionals and business owners that you're interviewing. Now to open it up, you just click on the name and that will open up a new tab. There are three steps. The first step is filling out information about the business. Anything that is marked with a red asterisk, you need to fill out. Anything that is not, is totally optional. But the information that will be used in step one will come under a few different categories. It'll either be used for the interview or it could be used for the business profile page or it could be used for the user account. We're not gonna highlight their email address on the interview or on their business profile page, but we'll use that for their account. Same too for the business address, we're only gonna use that for their profile page. So these fields here, these little red asterisk fields, you've gotta fill out. These other ones like the website and social media, the business owner can do this later on. But to loop back to when we got here, which was finding questions and finding your, the rest of the tools in your toolkit, Step two is where you're gonna find questions. Now there are a lot of them. So I like to really reinforce that you do not need to ask every single question here. There's like 40 to 50 questions. What you want to do is pick an appropriate amount for your interview. Now the interview that you're doing, you're probably aiming to have this, if it's video, be somewhere between three minutes and 10 minutes long on average. Maybe if you're doing this over Zoom, it may be a little bit longer. It could go up to 20 minutes plus, but usually three to 10 minutes is, is what people are aiming for. Anything less than three minutes, it's, although it's very watchable, it's less valuable for the business owner. And anything longer than 20 minutes, 30 minutes, people are very unlikely to watch. But before we get into like the questions and really which ones I recommend asking, let's just quickly get into a little bit more about time and length of videos. Cause this is something that uh, agents will bring up all the time. They get so focused on uh, creating content that people can watch, you know, like the people are going to be watching because of the, the attention span, all that stuff. You're creating content that is immediately specific to one person initially, and that is the person you're interviewing. Even if the interview is super watchable and has all these amazing editing effects and things like that, if the business owner doesn't like the interview, then that's not necessarily a failure, but that's a that's a that's not the best situation to be in. That's the first person you're wanting to impress. So if they're really loving the process and the interview turns out to be 15 minutes long, that's okay. Because that's the first person you're wanting to have remark on your content. You want that person to say, Wow, this was great. That was so much fun. Because they're going to be a source for interview referrals and a person that can either become a client themselves or refer you business in the future. That's the first person you want to impress. Now, the second person you want to impress or the second group is the people that follow that business and potentially your business as well. Because whenever you create an interview about any business, there is immediately going to be people that are not interested in the content you've created. If you interview a business that uh, focuses on hunting, right? It doesn't matter how great or optimized that interview is for social media and time and editing and things like that. My wife is just not going to watch that video because she's not interested in that topic. So don't aim for everyone with your topic right off the bat, aim for the business owner or person you've interviewed, then aim for the people that are interested in that business because they're the most likely to watch it. And then the third tier is your following and just the people in your community. Because you could get a lot of views on your interview, but how much, what does that really mean for your business? It's brand impressions, right? What you really want is for this person that you've interviewed to refer you business in the future or to become a client yourself. So focus on the right priority set. That is the person you're wanting to pay attention to. Next is their friends and following because they're going to be like, well, who was that person you interviewed? And then it's air quotes, everyone else. Because if you had 10,000 views on your video on one hand, and then on the other hand, you had a client 
um, but it only had 10 views on the video. So 10,000 views and no clients and uh, 10 views and one client. Most agents will go with the second option because they want to be building their business. So it's always thinking about your priority list for what you're wanting here. So next for what we're going to get into are the questions, but I'm going to pause here for those that are live on the session. So for those that are uh, on Zoom live right now, any questions you guys have, you can either unmute yourself and ask them in the, the um, using your microphone. You can use the, the chat box as well. Um, but I'm just going to say this. If you are good to go, just make sure to let me know in the chat or give me a thumbs up uh, or you know use the little emoji system on Zoom. And that way I know we can move forward. For those that are watching this later in the future on YouTube, we'll push forward shortly. So any questions, team, about what we've covered so far? Donna's good to go. Awesome. Justin's good to go. Fantastic. Mike's good to go as well. Perfect. Great. So let's get into the questions. Now, the questions that you're going to ask, remember, you're going to cover those four, four things. What do they do? What do they like? What do they want? And what do they need? So let's actually map out what an interview might look like. I recommend asking between five and 10 questions in your interview, just to keep it within that time parameter. You know, if they take a minute to answer a question at most, and you're ask, asking five questions, you're going to be in a five to six minute interview. Nothing crazy long. Okay. If you're asking 20 questions and it takes a minute to answer them, well, as you can see, the interview is going to get a lot longer. So let's base this around a five to 10 question interview. Right off the bat, we want to think about what do we want to talk about right away? We want to get into the business. We want to be highlighting them, talking about what they do. That's going to be a theme throughout this interview. So we could start off with something really easy. Hey, describe your business. I'll put this into the chat for those that are on live. That can be our opening question. Really simple. You know, you say, thanks for joining me today. So question number one, describe your business. Now, a step up from that is actually to combine a open and closed question into what I refer to as a shotgun question, a double barrel question, where you actually ask two questions in one go. So you do your introduction, you know, thanks so much for joining me today. And then you say, so let's get started. Question number one, describe your business, but also tell us, you know, how long have you been around in this community uh, serving your clientele? Two questions that have just been asked. Now you'd count that in your mind as one, but you're gathering more information. Okay, so you can double barrel your questions from time to time. Question number two, we want to maybe talk a little bit more about their business for sure, but some of these other features. Okay, what made you decide to open this business? How did you get started? Or why did you choose this profession is going to do that? Say we take, why did you choose this profession? This question is going to answer uh, obviously what they do, but it's also going to reveal maybe what they like, what they need, or what they want as well. So you're revealing a lot of information with just that one question. You're going to notice that's going to happen with a lot of these ones that I get into. Sometimes it's more focused on one than others, uh, but that's just to give you the theme of what we're doing. Next, you might want to talk a little bit more about them running the business or their clientele. So what surprised you most when owning and running this business? Uh, what was it like when you first started? What's something that most people don't know about it? What would your customers say they love most? Or what are some odd requests you've had from clients? These are all going to give completely different answers. And you can probably see a little bit here about the value of them. What is something most people don't know about the business specifically talks about what they do. And it's promoting maybe information that's just not clear and easy to find. Some people have assumptions about businesses because they hear the term, but they don't really know all that much about it. Personal trainer is a great example. Oftentimes people think of a personal trainer as being in the gym, screaming in someone's face, telling them to do more sit-ups or more push-ups. But sometimes what personal trainers will do is they'll have other things that they get into. And so instead of just being in the gym, you know, your, your typical weights and exercise there, they'll be getting into also ballet classes, right? Zumba or whatever the, the latest sort of uh, version of that is. It could be kickboxing. There could be all these other different things that people will just maybe not directly associate with it unless they know a little bit more about their profession. And other times you can really highlight other avenues of the business that they're just starting, right? Or really excited about. 
So lots of different questions here that can reveal some great things. I'm gonna go with what would your customers say that they love most about your business? Now, the reason why I like that question is because it gets them uh, in a position where they can talk themselves up because they've been kind of told to. It's very difficult for a business owner to say like, we're great at all these different things, but if you phrase it in a way where it's talking about someone else, it becomes easier. Rather than you th saying to them, what do you think is the best thing about your business? You phrase it by saying, what would your customers say they love most about it? Because now they can think back to stories and connections they've had with people and share those stories. They might even provide specific examples like, oh, we have a client that's been with us for a long time. They think X, Y, Z about our business. So, so far we've revealed maybe some of the things about that, what they want, what they like. We've talked a lot about what they do. Let's get a little bit more into what they need now. Now, a question that I want you to include in every single interview that you do is what are your goals over the next year? Where do you see your business in the next 12 months? Where do you uh, want your business to be in the next X amount of time? The reason why you need to put this in here is that this question is future facing. It's going to reveal what they want to have happen and reveal maybe what they need. It also gives you the ability to following the interview, ask this person, hey, so I know you want your business to be here in the next 12 months. What about you personally? Any landmarks or milestones uh, that you're wanting to, to achieve in that time frame? Because that question now is going to get them thinking about their milestones in their own life. Getting engaged, getting married, having kids, retiring. If we take a step back, maybe the kids going to college. All of these things here are often attributed to when someone is going to buy or sell a home. So this is a really easy way to have that conversation later on. Now, if you just ask them later on, hey, what are your goals over the next year? They're probably going to talk about their business. But now that you've kind of given them the ability to answer as it relates to them, it really just gives you some more opportunities here. So what are your goals over the next year? It's going to focus on what they, uh, you know, what they do. It's going to focus on what they need. It's going to focus on what they like and, um, you know, obviously what they want. Now, our last question in this five question interview that we're going through here is something simple about the area that ends on a high. What factors made you choose this neighborhood and why do you choose to stay here still? They're going to really be promoting that area. What do you love most about the neighborhood? That's an even easier way to do this. What are your favorite restaurants or hotspots in this area that you think that our viewers should check out? It gives them the ability to share uh, in celebration, share positivity, right? So these questions are fantastic. Simplest one, what do you love most about the neighborhood? That'll be how we end our hypothetical interview. So that's gonna reveal obviously what they like, maybe gonna reveal what they want, what they need, uh, and give you also ideas of who to interview in the future. Now your next step could even be that at the end of this interview process, when you're about to leave, you say, hey, before I forget, I know you mentioned that you really love business name, uh, do you know the owner? I would actually love to interview them. Um, I think they, they sound like a really cool place to go and feature. Um, do you know the owner? And just see what they say. If they do, fantastic. Hey, would you mind connecting me with them? Or when do you think is the best time for me to reach out? And then that way, what's going to happen is they're going to help you book interviews. And this happens, right? We've had people say, you know, who do you think I should interview next after the interview? And business owners love it. And they actually go and book interviews kind of on your behalf or really endorse what you're doing streamlines the process big time. But those five questions, describe your business. Why do you choose this profession? What would your customers say they love most about your business? What are your goals over the next year? And finally, what do you love most about the neighborhood? We're now shaping up a, a legitimate interview here. Now their answers may expand beyond the questions that you've asked. You may actually find that you're wanting to ask other questions on top of what these ones are here. But this is really going to, uh, be a, a structure that you want to follow. Now, whether or not you use these same questions every single time, that's up to you. But I find that you want to tailor them a little bit more based off the research that you're doing. So lots and lots and lots of uh, questions that you could get into, but there are five to get you started. Now, 
what you'd want to think about next once you got your questions because you'll likely do this before you are even uh, are considering actually doing this interview you've got a yes and you're, you're sending them information first but what you want to think about next when you've got these questions is really the flow and, and strategy that you're going to really conduct this one so introduction is going to go first q a is in the middle and outro is at the end of course i have seven steps that i recommend to any person creating video content regardless of whether it's an interview or not but it's designed to streamline what you're doing because sometimes when people are thinking about these interviews they're like great i'm going to get this shot and this angle and this i'm going to do this shot this shot this shot and they think of this amazing incredible netflix quality uh interview and then they go to do it and they're like i have no idea how to put these together let alone take these shots so my advice is rather than overcomplicate the process because you don't want to be spending seven years editing your video rather than overcomplicate the process what you're going to do is follow these seven steps so these are matt's seven steps to shooting uh video content step number one super important right if you don't do this the interview the video interview that you're doing is just going to fall apart step number one turn on the camera really important if you don't turn on the camera there's no video interview and i've had conversations where people have said to me hey check out this interview that i did i'm going to send it through to you and they send me an image and i'm like oh my gosh what and so i go and look at this and i'm like hey that you actually sent through an image can you send through the video file and they're like no no that's that's the only video file that i have and what they have done is they've taken a photo instead of turned on the camera step number two this is also quite important uh, and that is after the camera has pressed record you know you, you've um you know you've started recording you're going to wait two to three seconds this is what i refer to as a buffer period have you ever noticed that when you're shooting a video at home say it's like a family event and you're wanting to take a video um to celebrate it could be a birthday or something like that you press record and it takes a second to get started that's what happens with a lot of video footage because the camera just takes a little extra bit of time to turn off. If you then start your interview right away before the camera's ready, instead of saying, hey guys, thanks for joining on, your interview will start, guys, thanks for joining on. It's a little different, changes the tone and feel of what you're doing. So that can be solved by pressing record, smiling, looking at the camera, waiting two to three seconds, and then beginning. So that would sound like this, press record. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. And it's just a little buffer in the middle. Okay, that's really gonna save you a lot of time. And you can always trim the ends of that on an, any video editor or even on YouTube if you wish. Step three is the introduction. So we've talked about this a little bit at the beginning. Now that's gonna be the start of your interview. Now, most people, when they're doing an introduction, will just introduce themselves in the interviewee like we've talked about. The best interviews are going to talk up that other person. Now, do you have to talk up that other person? No, but we recommend it. So an introduction is the camera's on, you wait two to three seconds, then you say, hey guys, Matthew KUT here from Remax West Realty. Welcome to another episode of Get to Know Liberty Village. I'm super excited for this interview today. I have the pleasure of meeting with Samantha, the owner of Grazi Restaurant in Young and Eglinton. And the reason why I've been looking forward to this interview so much is because I visit this restaurant all the time. They are awesome. And I think it's really one of the hottest spots in our community. The community also agrees with that as they won this award last year for X. Super excited for this interview. Samantha, thanks so much for joining me today. And she's going to go, wow, great, solid, powerful introduction. She's going to feel like you really are controlling the process. And following that, she's going to say, thanks so much for having me. And then you can get into your questions and answers, also known as your Q&A. Okay, so step one is turn on the camera, you wait a couple of seconds, you start your introduction, then you move into your Q&A. And that's the questions we went through here. Describe your business. Why do you choose this profession? What would customers say they love most about your business? What are your goals over the next year? And finally, what do you love most about the neighborhood? That is going to be the largest part of your interview that goes in the middle. And you finish off by getting into something that we haven't spoken about yet, 
and that is your outro. Now your outro is very simple. It's just the end of your filmed section uh, and it's really you wrapping up. So you remind people who you are, what you do, you put your name in there, your position, your brokerage, things like that. And you encourage your viewers to go to your site by mentioning uh, like the URL and you include a call to action to encourage other businesses to either reach out to you to be featured, to visit the business that you've uh, interviewed or to do something that you're looking for. So a simple version of this would be, hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Once again, I'm Matthew KUT, real estate agent with Remax West Realty. Be sure to check out our local community website at parkranch.com forward slash Liberty Village. And if you have a business and want to be featured, reach out to me today at 1234-567890. See you next time. So an outro is really the end point of your interview. Now, personally, I find that the best way to do this is to actually incorporate like a thanking of the interviewee in this. So at the end of your interview, whether it's on Zoom or in person, you would say to them, look at them and you'd say to them, look, Samantha, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been amazing to learn a lot more about your business. I feel like I've really been enlightened on, on how you guys operate. Uh, I'm super excited for where your business is headed in the future. Now they'll likely respond and they'll say, yeah, of course, thank you. Or maybe just with, even with their body language, they nod, they smile, things like that. But once you give them a chance to respond, then you address your audience. And you say, hey, once again, team, thanks for watching. My name is Matthew KUT. Uh, this has been another episode of Get to Know Liberty Village. Uh, one last point for all of you here. If you are wanting to shop local and support local businesses during uh, everything that's going on right now, gratis in Young and Eagleton is one of those businesses you want to go and frequent. They are amazing. They do a fantastic job. They're following the protocols and it's really important to foster that support of local businesses in this area for our economy to flourish. Once again, see you next time. And then now you're providing a specific call to action, kind of bookending your process. So that way anyone that is interested in taking action after this video has something to go and take action with. So really, really valuable thing to add on to the end of your process. Because if you don't, the interview can be a little bit janky and it just ends. Now we've got examples in this uh, script uh, document here of Jesse doing both the intro and the outro. I'm gonna send that through to you after the session today. But as it relates to our seven steps to shooting video content, we've covered step one, which is turn on the camera. Step two, which is wait two to three seconds, also known as the buffer period. Step three is the intro. Step four is the Q and A. Step five is the outro. What are the last two steps? Now the last two steps, uh, one is much more important than the other one. The, the important one is step six, and that is again to wait two to three seconds, right? Incorporate another buffer period. And the reason for that is you don't wanna be in a situation where you're super excited about the end of your video that you finish and you jump for joy and you're like, yeah, we did it, awesome. Because it's gonna make it so much more difficult to edit out. Same too as if you don't do all that, but you finish your interview and then you just look and chat with this person. It's gonna make it harder to edit out that back piece. Or it could even be that you finish your interview and then you immediately lean over and press stop on the camera. That is also going to make it harder to edit out. So just finish your outro. Thanks for joining me today, guys. See you next time. Smile, wait a second or two, and then go and press stop. Because that'll just give you those nice little buffer periods at the end of your content, the beginning and the end, sorry, that you can trim. And then you'll be looking really good. Now, the final step is probably the thing that uh, I would say is acceptable to miss. If you miss any one of these other steps, it's going to either create the interview as disjointed, it's going to impact editing, or it's going to uh, just destroy the interview because you don't, maybe you haven't filmed it. Step seven is turn off the camera. Okay, so it's not a rocket science ending. Uh, if you don't turn off the camera and you're still filming by the time you get home, that's okay. You can edit that off. It's probably not the best for your battery uh, or the length of the video or footage on your uh, device, but turning off the camera is how you end it. So those are really the seven steps to filming content. It's not rocket science, but what you'll notice is that during this process, you'll get it done in one shot. You'll only need to trim the ends and you'll have all the content together. You're not gonna be splicing in things, adding in this, adding in that. 
because that can just take a long time. Go for raw, go for real, because that's realistically where we are right now as a, you know, as a society. It's all about raw, real footage. So this is something I highly encourage using. Now you may have a team that can help you with this. You may have more experience with shooting video and you feel more comfortable to take other shots. If that's the case, go for it. But one and done is really the goal here. So before we get on to our last piece of this session, for those that are on live, any questions, queries, comments about anything we've covered so far, let me know. Same drill as before. Give me a thumbs up if you're good to go. Let me know in the chat box if you're ready to move on or you can unmute yourself and ask your questions that you may have. So any questions team, we'll pause here for 30, 40 seconds in case you got them. Good to go, awesome. Fantastic. Great, so let's move forward then. So the final uh, area of this is we're gonna talk a little bit about Zoom because uh, that's a big hot topic question for a lot of people. How do I do these interviews on Zoom? Do they, uh, do they work on Zoom? That's a good one again as well all the time. Ultimately, the interview, however it's set, whether it's written, in-person video or remote video, is based around one thing. You creating a piece of content that highlights their business, that promotes their business, that makes them feel good about working with you. You can do that through any medium. Because I've had people do that with written interviews. I've had people do that with Zoom interviews. And I've had people do that with in-person interviews of all different lengths, and topics and things like that. And sometimes, sometimes you'll do an interview and you'll think, oh, that wasn't very good. And then they'll message you the next day and they'll say, that was amazing. Thank you so much for this. And then you're thinking, oh, you might think differently if, when you see it. And so you post it and they're like, this is awesome. This is better than what I thought. And that's because their experience is gonna be different from yours. You are going to be your and the content's biggest critic. You 100% will because you're creating it. The people that you're interviewing are receiving this for free and much like yourself they are a business owner they are a local professional that is constantly told you need to do video you need to create this content you need to do that there it is not exclusive to real estate agents although it might feel like that sometimes so that is super super important to remember it's about the content and the act of creating the content for this other person that you're wanting to double down on some of our most successful clients their interviews i'll be honest are okay. They're not amazing. They are seven steps. You know, following those seven steps, just having a conversation. Sometimes the editing is not so good, even with the trimming and things like that. But people love them because it's the act of providing value to someone that really wins them over. So if you are doing this through Zoom or in person, we'll touch on that briefly. In Zoom, you need to go through the steps of setting yourself up on a Zoom account. So you can do that at zoom.us. It is free to do so. There are paid plans. The free plan is totally fine. The biggest limitation with a free plan is that if you are interviewing two people at once and they are on different devices, there is a 40 minute time limit. But if you're only interviewing one person, you're good to go. Now, when you are using Zoom, we have a step-by-step -step guide here. Zoom obviously has the same, but it's really simple. You start by opening a new meeting or scheduling one. You join the audio like you all will have done when you came onto this meeting today. They need to do that too. Uh, you invite your interviewee as the host, you'll have the ability to do so. You can invite them via email, via a link, uh, or via contacts if you're synced those to Zoom. You send them that link and they click on and join on there. Now, while they're doing that, you can turn on your camera, easy thing to do, and then the interviewee will join that meeting eventually. Okay, you want to have this obviously scheduled out ideally that's the, the ideal but this is one if you're just running the meeting all of a sudden and i know we're going through this quickly because i'm going to send this through to you later on a few things you want to check for number one is is there audio and camera on right well at one and two sorry audio is going to be represented by a little microphone in the participants list camera you'll be able to see but it'll highlight whether or not they have that the next thing is to enable gallery mode now, this is a strategy for conducting video interviews. By default, Zoom focuses on a speaker, the one person that they can hear and registers there, but you can also use the gallery view. Now, the gallery view places you side by side. This is the traditional format for conducting a Zoom interview. But what you need to remember is that you need to be looking at the camera during this, because if you're not looking at the camera, 
you're going to be looking down into this corner, this corner, or somewhere else. It's very obvious when you're checking that out. So always look at the camera. And the final step is really recording the interview. So you need to be able to do this in order to actually get that content created. But we've got this article and I have a video at the bottom of it which goes through how to create this as well. So it's really, really useful to just research, prepare ahead of time before you do a Zoom interview. Now that's much the same for an in-person interview. In-person interview, you wanna make sure you've got your equipment ready. What are you filming on? A smartphone or a DSLR camera? My personal preference is a smartphone because it's accessible and you, if you don't have a DSLR camera, you don't wanna be spending a whole bunch of money on one. And let's be honest, smartphones have fantastic cameras anyway. Next, you want to consider the equipment, right? Now, the equipment that you're using can vary. Some agents just use a smartphone. Some agents use a smartphone and a selfie stick. Others will have a tripod. In this article, which I will send through to you, my favorite is actually the cheapest one. This one here, it's about $12. You don't need to go and spend a ton of money on these. Now, microphones are something that you may want to invest in because with a microphone, what will happen is that it's going to capture the noise of that environment. If you have no microphone, it's going to be very exposed to any background noise. So construction, weather, wind, people playing, running around in the background, uh, animals, traffic, but a microphone can help overcome that. So these are the two main types. Shotgun microphone, which is attaches to your de uh, device and it's directional. And then you've also got a lapel microphone, which attaches to someone's collar. Just bear in mind that the lapel microphone is best for removing background noise. But uh, with this one here, the uh, like lapel mic, uh, you want to make sure you have two extensions to it. You don't want to just have one microphone because otherwise you won't be able to share it around. And the final piece here is lighting. And this is something that you don't really need to invest in, if I'm being honest. Uh, you can if you want to, but the reason why I say you don't need to invest in it is because you can just replace the lighting uh, that you would buy with this with natural light. Are you filming indoors where there's a lovely window? Have your faces facing towards that window because that is going to shed natural light onto your face, which is exactly where you want it. You don't want it behind you, to the side of you or above you. You want it shining onto you so that way you're nice and clear. Now with Zoom interviews, Lighting is another thing you want to consider as well. Don't do an interview with a big light source behind you. You will look very shadowed. It's not effective, not efficient, not worthwhile. You want to do it in a way where you've got the natural light on your face. Okay. So that article has got a bunch of resources, but ultimately check them out at Best Buy, check them out on Amazon, check it out at the source or any other, uh, you know, electronic stores around you for you there. Ultimately, make sure you're suiting your budget. There's no reason why you need to go and spend a ton of money on this. You might not even spend anything on this if you have a strategy that you are wanting to use with just your smartphone. You would need, at the very minimum, some way to put your camera and have it positioned in a way where it can actually film. You want it to film horizontally, not vertically. Vertical is Instagram, horizontal is YouTube, where these videos will go. And you want to make sure you're in a quiet environment with lots of natural light. That's really the main stuff. But one thing that's really going to help you with this is to create a self interview. Now, self interview can be done by clicking on real estate professional or mortgage lender, depending on what profession you are, and actually interviewing you. Now, you would do this yourself. You put your camera set up, ready to go. You could have a friend interview or a family member interview if you want. And you'd answer all of the questions here in step two in written format, and then pick your favorite ones that you've written out and put them into your video maybe four or five of them. That'll get you familiar with not only creating a video, right, but posting the video as well. Because you can use this as your, your role play one where you're actually filling out all these fields, putting the video on YouTube and, and putting that into the space and then posting to see how it all unfolds. So the self interview, I'm gonna send you a bunch of information on as well, but ultimately it's you interviewing you. Now, some agents love that. They'll go and do that. That'll be one of their first interviews, if not their first one that they'll do. Others will do it a little bit later, and that's cool too. Some people prefer the idea of someone interviewing them. So if you have a friend or family member that would do this, fantastic. If you don't, uh, Park Ranch does have like additional services like that 
which you can get in packages, you know, things that are included in booking interviews, video editing packages, or what we call the get to know me package. So if you're wanting to learn more about uh, having our team interview you, plus do a few other things for you like booking interviews and video edits and things like that, creating blog content or content marketing, what I'll get you to do is just reach out to me after the session. I'll send my follow-up email through to you. We can put it into the chat box now if you're interested in learning more and I can have your account manager connect with you just to let you know about what's available. If it's for you, great. If it's not for you, not a problem, but having that conversation just at least gives you that opportunity to find out if it's something that you're wanting to do or not. So that's the main content I wanna to cover today. I know we've gone quite long for this session. I'm recording it for YouTube here as well. So we'll wrap up at this point now. Any final questions for those that are live on the session, fantastic, uh, go ahead. If you don't have any questions, not a problem. I'll get you to put your email addresses into the chat box and that way I know who's joined the session and I'll reach out to you following this. I believe I actually do have everyone, so we should be pretty good for that, thinking about that list right now. Uh, but if you do have questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll send through my follow-up email, which is gonna have a bunch of resources relating to doing interviews. And really your next step would be to get onto conducting either a self-interview or interview with a friend or family member, uh, or joining on to the other fundamentals coaching series to really get rolling and get moving with where you're up to. So final questions team, let me know. Otherwise have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll reach out to you via email for those that have joined on live. For those that are watching this in the future on YouTube, you'll find the resources below the video uh, on the page that you're looking at. Thanks team, have a great rest of your day.